So thanks for having me. This will be about Ivy and architectures. And let me start with a question. Did you ever wonder what Ivy does behind the curtains? I mean, we've heard a lot of Ivy so far. We have seen that Ivy leads to smaller bundles and so on, but how does it really work? Well, let me give you a small example. What you see here is a simple Hello World application with a title that is data bound within the templates between two H1 DAGs. And when Ivy is doing its work, first of all, the TypeScript compiler is down leveling the component to ECMAScript 2015 or to it, uh, its ECMAScript 5 equivalent. That looks like that. And then Ivy is adding some metadata to this component. And this metadata is basically a bunch of static properties. I think the most important property is this here, the component definition, which holds a lot of data about the component. And as you see, it starts with this prefix. It looks a bit like a Greek data. And this prefix is telling you that we are dealing with private APIs. If you look into this metadata, you will find the type of the component, the selectors, and you will find a template function. And this template function is basically your HTML template compiled by Ivy into JavaScript. If we look into it, we see it has two parameters. The first parameter is the render flag. It can have two values, namely one and two. One means we are in the creation phase. Two means we are in the update phase. Well, integration phase, Angular is creating your template. It is creating all your HTML DAGs like my H1 DAG. And in the update phase, it's performing data binding. It's updating all the data bindings. The context here is nothing else than your component instance. In our case, the instance having a type. If we look in here, we check for the render flag or IV, the IV generated code checks for the render flag. And if it's one, we are in the creation phase. We will create an element. Here it's an H1 element. We will create a placeholder. The placeholder gets the ID one. And of course, we are well behaved. So we will close this H1 deck. In rendering phase two, in the update phase, we are jumping to the element with the ID one, and then we are interpolating here something, namely the title. The title is written into the placeholder. And that's basically what Ivy is doing behind the curtains. So as you see here, because we are very close to the dome, we have less code. This results in smaller bundle sizes. And we are just using functions here. As we know, functions are tree shakeable, at least more tree shakeable than methods. And this is why Ivy is better at tree shake. Now I want to use this knowledge to explain how Ivy will influence our uh, architectures in the future. And for this, I've prepared several stuff. I will talk about lazy components. I will talk about dynamic components. I will talk about higher order components as well as about standalone components. So first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Manfred. I'm a train and consultant for Angular. I'm doing a lot of in-house trainings. For instance, this one here, which is about enterprise applications with Angular. It's an advanced training. And I'm also part of the Angular community. So let's start with lazy components. Saying this, this guy here is really my soulmate. And the soulmate of sure likes lazy loading, I guess. And when it comes to lazy loading components, it's really easy with Ivy because all you need is this, that, this dynamic inboard introduced with ECMAScript 2017. So you point to the file with your component and then you get back an object representing the whole file. You are getting out the right export. Here it's the dashboard tile component. You need a component factory resolver. You can get hold of by dependency injection. This gives you a factory for this component. And then you can instantiate this factory with create component within a few container. Saying this, you can get hold of the few container by using this few child uh, decorate. 
Hey, okay, uh, Manfred. Cool. Let me show you an Unmute example me. for this. Hey, Manfred, can you hear me? Let's move out here. Manfred, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. We, we think that you may be f flying by like a photon source or some sort of space anomaly because the left, the right half of your face is totally lighted up and we can't really see it well on the stream. Is there any way oh, you yeah, can close the blinds so on your window? That's because of the sunset. Give me one second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's crazy what happens in space these days, right? Like, you're just flying around, yeah, on your spaceship, and, and like, um, a photon, like, someone locks so on phasers. It's better. I've talked to engineering. And yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That it's better now. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm turning it back on to you. Valhalla, you took care of it. Thank you. Okay, great. So let's come back to lazy loading. What we see here is this example with uh, tiles and all the tiles here in this dashboard are lazy loaded. Of course, everyone can claim that lazy loading takes happen here. So let me prove it to you. Let's jump into our F12 tools. Let's go to the network tab. Let's click at tile and, oh no, <laughs> it's already lazy loaded one more try. Let's click to add dial, and here we see it. This component is really lazy loaded. That means we just get the component and nothing else. So perhaps you are wondering why this works with Ivy, because that did not work before, didn't it? So it works with Ivy because with Ivy we have self-describing components, and that means that the component has everything we need to render it at runtime. Think about this component metadata field, which is just a static property here. And the Angular team is also calling this locally principle. And so we need just to load the component and we are good to render it. Before that was not possible because before, the metadata like this was part of ng modules, and this is the very reason why we had to load ng modules. The Zoom video on top of the presentation is this one? Okay, great. So this brings a lot of potential. Of course, we can do lazy loading in a very fine-grained way. And this is also the key for partial hydration, partial dehydration, which means you just get an index HTML, a static index HTML, and everything you need will be loaded just on demand. So for the rest of this presentation, I have one word of warning for you. In the rest of this presentation, I will directly use private APIs. And as you can guess, using private APIs in production is not the best idea. I'm doing this to show you the potential of Ivy and its potential for future versions of Angular. And I'm also showing this because it makes me feel like a daredevil if I'm going with private APIs. I like it if people say, hey, look at Manfred, this old daredevil. So let's get started with dynamic and higher order component. If you look at this here, this is a function creating a dynamic component. And for this with Ivy, we just need to create a class which works on the fly with TypeScript and JavaScript. And then everything we need to do else is we need to add a property that looks like what IB would add at compile time, for instance, this component metadata property. And when we return this component, this component can be used as every IB based component. Now let's go one step further. Let's assume we are passing in here another component. And let's further assume we are calling this component as part of our template function. In this case, we would have a higher order component. A higher order component is just a component that is operating with other components. And for this, I've prepared another demonstration for you. Let's move to my example for this. In my example, I have this dashboard page component. 
Let me show it you in action. This dashboard page component takes a parameter, which is called year. Let's make a forecast for 1998. I found out that making forecasts for the past is a bit easier. And as you see here, this year number is displayed here. If we look into our component, we see there is no trace of the router at all. There is just an input. And as we all know, the router itself cannot work with inputs. It was discussed when Angular was built, but uh, we've decided that we want to use the router explicitly. And so what we normally need, if we don't want to use the router within a component, we need a wrapper component. A wrapper component talking to the router, taking all the parameters and passing them to input variables. Of course, we could handwrite it. I have a better solution. I've written a higher order component for this. So let's switch to our app roots file. And here we see I'm just pointing to my dashboard page component and I'm passing it to this function with root. And with root is basically creating this dynamic higher order component, which wires this component to the router. Okay, so also this has a lot of potential for your future architecture. It provides more dynamic. I mean, creating dynamic components has never ever been as easy as that. And if you ask me, it's the key for a lot of framework extensions. It allows us to hook into the framework and extend stuff on the fly like we have seen before. I think we will see a lot of open source libraries using those extensions in the future. Let's also talk about standalone component. Honestly, I'm very excited about this topic. It's one of my favorite topic. Standalone components also means we don't need ng modules anymore. But if we don't go with ng modules, there is one question that arises, namely, how does this component know that it can access this other component here, this bar component, showing a blue, a green, a red bar. And honestly, it is quite easy with IV because IV has this component metadata as a static property. We've seen it before. And there is a directive devs array. And this is where we can place all the other components we are allowed to call. I'm calling this the neighborhood of the component. Here, the bar component would be the neighborhood of the dashboard dial component. The official technical term is the compilation comes. And now you need to be strong because I'm telling you that Ivy is at runtime not taking care of your components. It doesn't need your components. It is not referencing your components. The compiler is at compile time transverting all the components into this very syntax. Saying this, just for the sake of simplicity, I've removed some type assertions on this slide. Normally, it would be a bit more complex, slightly more complex due to type assertions. If you ask yourself how you can group components without ng module, well, just take an array like here and export this array from within a barrel, for instance, from within an index.ds file. That means that your barrels, your index.ds files, will replace, hopefully, ng module in the future. Saying this, replacing is perhaps not the best term because they will become optional, at least this is the idea, but they will not go away because if they were removed, this would be a breaking change and we did not make good experiences with breaking changes in the Angular community, if you ask me. So don't be afraid, it will be an option for you. Okay, so Minko Getchev, who is meanwhile part of the Angular team, wrote a proposal for all this. It is just a prototype and this prototype shows that it might be possible to extend decorators like the component decorator by an dependencies array where you can just mention all the components you need for this component here where you could mention the neighborhood. It is just a proposal. 
So we will see if and how this will land in a future version of that. Let me show you a demonstration for this. So for this, we will move back to our application. And in my application, I have here this component, no, this dashboard dial module. And as you see here, before the bar component was registered alongside the dashboard dial component. So the dashboard dial component was capable of using the bar component. This is not the case anymore, but it works anyway. So let's have a look into our dashboard dial component. Let's find out why it works. Well, it works because I've written this directive, this directive which is taking the bar components array and registering it within the metadata of this very dashboard dial component. So basically, I'm doing what Minko did, but without forking Angle. Okay, so let's go on. We can also bootstrap standalone components, which is quite nice. Just call this render component function. It's still a private one. Pass your Angular component and that's it. This has a lot of potential. If you ask me, it will influence our project structure in the future because we don't need ng modules anymore. We can structure big applications with libraries, for instance, with NX libraries and or with barrels with index.ds files exporting everything we need. And of course, standalone components are a big deal for web components. If you like this, what you've seen here, check out my blog. I've written a lot about those possibilities Ivy will provide for future versions of Angular. And if you did not like this talk, check out my blog anime. Perhaps I'm writing better than I'm speaking. Who knows? So let me come to a conclusion. We've seen that we can do lazy loading in a very fine-grained way. And this is the key for partial hydration, partial dehydration. We have seen that we can go with dynamic components and with higher order components. And at the end of the day, this is the key for a lot of framework extensions. Also, a standalone component provides you a way to structure your application just with barrels and libraries. And also, this is a big deal for web components. So we are reaching the end, but before I'm closing, I want, you, I want to give you a side, a side from my most famous uh, scientist. Perhaps you know him. He is Emmett Brown, PhD. This is how he looks like nowadays. And he said, your future hasn't been written yet. So what Emmett meant is that we see a lot of features that are possible because of Ivy, but currently we don't know exactly how those features will end up in future versions of Angular. But we know Ivy have been written with all those ideas in the head, but we don't know how the public API will look like. I'm quite sure this was what Emmett Brown wanted to tell us at the end of Back to the Future 3. So here is my... Uh, here are my contact data and you will find my slides and all my examples within my blog in some minutes. Thanks for having me and have a nice day here at the